Greetings fellow makers, welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill and today I'm going to show you how I made Sulfurus, the Hand of Ragnaros. I played World of Warcraft for about five years. Back in the day, a lot of vanilla WoW, a lot of Burning Crusade. And despite raiding uh, Multicore a lot, I never got my hands on this legendary mace. So I decided to build one for myself. I made this fella here for BlizzCon, which was last weekend, and despite not having a costume, I still wanted something to haul around. So, I made this big fella. My wife Brittany made us some Stormwind Tabards. Of course, you can watch a video on that. We threw them on, grabbed our weapons, and we went to BlizzCon. It was super duper fun. This was a really fun, fast build. I did most of it in about two days. The electronics for all of these lights were handled in a different video. We'll have a link that down below. Go check that out. As far as the foam fabrication, it was a two-day build, and I'll show you exactly how we did it. All of the spikes were made from upholstery foam. This is nice and squishy, so I wouldn't hurt anyone at BlizzCon. It's also white, so it diffuses the light very nicely. I transferred my templates for the spikes to this foam, and then all of the pieces were cut out on the bandsaw. Once they were all cut out, I softened the edges on all of these guys using the belt sander. Molten cracks were then carved into the faces of these foam spikes using a soldering iron. I wanted these spikes to be removable, so I made an attaching mount for each one of them from a PVC pipe. These were all cut out on my other bandsaw. These mounts were then super glued into each of the upholstery foam spikes. I also drilled a hole all up in those foam spikes to help more of the LED light reach further into the spikes. To paint and seal the spikes, I used latex rubber, starting with a layer that was tinted with orange acrylic paint. Once I was dry, I mixed a batch with dark reddish color to cover everything except for those deeper orange cracks. This layer was brushed on by hand for each spike. The main body of the mace was made from sheets of 10 millimeter EVA foam. No surprises here. Using my template, I cut out the multiple sides of the form and glued everything together using contact cement. The bandsaw was a huge help in getting all of the edges cut at the right bevel. To make the mounting parts for the spike, I used my laser cutter. There are nine spikes and they're all mounted on circles to the base. So I had the laser cut out the circles with slots in them for the PVC pipe mounts that I made earlier. I also added a smaller circle piece to the foam that would provide extra friction and a place for my LED arrays to be glued on later. The main form of the body was glued up and a PVC pipe was glued into it to provide some good stability and a place for the handle to be attached. A PVC coupler was added to the bottom of this for that very purpose. Once most of the forms were put together, I glued in all of the LED lights and electronics. I needed to make sure everything worked and was in the right spot before closing up the mace because I didn't want to have to cut it apart later to fix anything. I made a little holder on the inside of the mace to keep the batteries in place. That was right below one of the spike mounts that I made. This mounting circle was left unglued so that I could take it off to access the batteries and power switch. All of the spike mounts were then glued down to the mace body and the LED NeoPixel arrays were stuck down with hot glue. Once I was confident that all of the lights still worked, I glued the sides of the mace to the main body part. There was still a bit of a messy seam where these parts joined, but I covered those up using more strips of EVA foam as per the original design. All of the edges were rounded over with the rotary tool and the main body of the mace was all done. Hey, I hope you guys really enjoy these uh, foam weapon builds. I sure do. Uh, they're perfect for a really quick project like this guy that I did in just two days and they're convention safe which is even more important. If you'd like to learn everything you need to know about foam prop making, then you wanna pick up Foam Smith 2 over at punishprops.com. This is my book on foam weapon making. It's the second in the Foam Smith series. So if you haven't gotten part one, go grab that one too. This is super comprehensive with over 500 photographs in both digital and print format. So if you wanna get jump started on foam prop making, Head over there today and grab your copy. All right, back to the build. I built the handle for this mace in two large pieces so that it could all be taken apart to fit into my luggage. Using an online pattern generator, I cut out two pieces 
to make the tapered tube parts of the handle. These parts were cut out from more of that 10 millimeter EVA foam and then glued together along the seams. They were glued together and then hot glued around a PVC pipe with a coupler attached to it to connect it to the rest of the handle. The seam between the two tapered tubes was then covered with another strip of EVA foam. The spikes for the bottom of the handle were made from more of that upholstery foam, again, to make it safe for carrying around at a convention. The pieces were cut up on the bandsaw and then glued together using contact cement. A hole was drilled into this spike array to glue it to the PVC pipe handle. This handle part was then wrapped up in a long, thin piece of leather using more contact cement. I was in just a little bit of a hurry to paint this mace, so I went straight to quick drying spray paints. Everything was base coated in a dark red spray paint and allowed to dry for just a couple of hours. The upholstery foam spikes were painted with more of that dark red latex rubber. I added a bunch of gradient and shadows to the mace head using an airbrush and some acrylic paints. This was done in a couple of passes to add some variety and contrast. Then the metal looking bands on the spike were painted by hand using a gold acrylic paint. This was then contoured a little bit more again with that airbrush to soften any areas that had a really hard looking edge that I didn't want. Finally I did some really drastic dry brushing on all of the mace edges with that gold paint to beat it up a bunch and add some more metallic contrast to the finish. The same was done on the spikes using that airbrush. Once everything dried, it was ready to go for BlizzCon. I am super stoked with how this thing turned out, and it was really fun to drag it around BlizzCon. I really, really like how all of the light comes through that upholstery foam, and it looks all craggly and rocky like lava. I also really like that I was able to build it all in just two days. It's kind of a testament to what you can accomplish if you've got the right skills and the right tools. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. I liked it an awful lot. Down in the description, I've got links to all of the tools and materials and resources that I used for this build. Thanks a whole bunch for checking out our videos, you guys. If you have questions about this build, then please let me know down in the comments. I try super hard to get back to all you guys. And I'd like to throw a special thanks out to our patrons over at patreon.com slash punished props. We have a really big milestone coming up here soon, a goal. And uh, hopefully we can use that goal and the money that you guys are sending over to us for our videos to upgrade a whole bunch of the video production gear that we have in the shop. If you'd like to help out a little bit, help us achieve that goal and help us make more of these videos, please consider heading on over there, throwing us a little bit of coin. If you're new to the channel, then you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button. We have new prop and costume making videos coming out every single week and you don't wanna miss it. Thank you all so much for watching the videos. I'll see you all in the molten core.